welcome to Eclectic Whimsy. We are located at 2801 Placida Road in Englewood. Eclectic Whimsy is home to about 30 local artists that display all types of their wares from acrylic painting, multimedia, textiles, beading. We have a little bit of everything and it is all local made. We are also a distributor of the Dixie Bell chalk paint and the best part is we teach classes, lots and lots of fun classes. Um, most of our classes are geared more towards the novice, so don't be afraid to come and try. The most important part when taking one of our classes is that you just have fun. So today we are going to do a class for our directional sign painting, where we're going to be taking a piece of wood, raw wood, pallet wood, an old fence picket, and we're going to turn them into directional signpost with some fun little sayings, whether, you know, it be Miami, so many miles, or, you know, flip-flop drop. So sit back, enjoy, and get your creativity flowing. Okay, so we're going to start with, so we're going for that rustic kind of look, like these, this wood is all like distressed looking. So I like to start um, the base of it the background color, I like to use the chalk paint for that just because chalk paint blends much, much nicer with water. You can blend a couple colors together. All right, so we always want to shake our chalk paint up first. And for our blending process, we're just going to use a cheapy chip brush. And I'm going to do one with you. Okay, so first I'm going to just give my board these are fence pickets. You can do fence pickets, um, pallet wood that you find on the side of the road, whichever. All right, I'm just going to dip a tiny bit. Only the bristles are in there, and I'm just going to give it a couple strokes. Then I'm different brush for different color paint because I don't want to contaminate my paint. And a couple strokes, and now... So I got two colors on there. I'm just going to pull my brush through the wet paint and look how pretty that is, how it's just blending together. They are like the epitome of beach happiness. Now it's your turn to try. Okay. So there's your spray. You just want to wet down your board. Uh-oh. That's good. We don't want soaking wet because... We need it to dry. So a couple, yeah, just your tips. And you probably have a lot on there. So yeah, wipe a little off on your lit, your, yeah. So easy. Yeah, whatever. You want more green, more blue. That looks like a good amount. And then a little bit of the green. Yeah, the green's a little low in there. Now, like in here, it looks a little bit dry, so we're just going to give it another spritz, and now just blend away. Beautiful. And now at this point, if you feel like, oh, I, I want some more of a certain color, but I just think the randomness of how things work out is always the best. Are you happy with the way it looks? I'll switch. You can have mine. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to put them in the dryer, and if um, they get switched, it's okay. So while they're drying, so you just want to write Englewood on it? Sure. Okay. So you can use stencils. There's all kinds of stencils that you can use. You can buy at a craft store, Walmart, whatever. If you want to do letters, there's all kinds of stencils that are for shapes, beachy shapes. Um, or you can put your hand at um, writing it by hand. Okay. Um, whenever someone chooses to write by hand, and that's what I did here, um, I always recommend using chalking it out first because mm -hmm. you can go right over the chalk and then um, the chalk wipes off. Great idea. First, we're going to drop these in the water, so we got to love our brushes so they don't get... And chalk paint, we 
need to keep it, it'll dry out quickly. Okay, so we want to do right angle wood on this one? Sure. Okay. So do you want to do it with a stencil or do you want to do it with the chalk? Chalk, I think. I always, I, it's just, I feel like I can go quicker with the chalk. I don't know. I don't, I don't prefer using the stencil. Okay, and see, I got a color that's very close to your colors in the wood or the, in your paint. Everybody loves a starfish. <laughs> so a lot of times I would suggest if you're going to put the word on mm -hmm. to put these on first okay. and then let the letters go right over your little image oh, some. Nice. Or you could, do, you know, you can work around the image you, either way, I guess. Um, is that the same size? So you could do two, like a big one and a little one. Mm -hmm. Why let's do the image first, I feel. I mean the words, and then we'll stencil on afterwards. Okay, so always a straight line. So do you like these long letters that I did? Because Englewood's a long word. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I would figure out probably from like there to there. So you're going to do a straight line. So put your, yeah, use your ruler and make a straight line. So which is going to be your bottom. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right around there. So you have just a little bit of airspace on the top and bottom of your letters. No, no, that's just cardstock. I was cutting out to put some things on. Oh, pretty close. And yep, you're a professional line maker. It's all right, as long as it's close enough, you're gonna get the idea. And then I always, when I do these real tall letters, you could almost see a little bit of my line still. I do a line at the top and bottom, so the height of my letters is the same. Not just, you know, that they're in a straight line at the bottom, but so I can have the same height. Okay. And which way do you want your arrow to face? Okay. All right. So when you're writing with the chalk, you don't have to push super hard because the idea is it's just a, it's just a guideline. Because the chalk's not permanent. So I just want to have a guesstimate of where I'm going. A lot of times when you have a piece like this, you have so many letters to fit in, I will count it out and put my middle letter in first. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, five. So measure, try to figure out the middle of that area there. So we got 12, 13, almost 14. So we'll say like seven. Okay. Four, five. So put an E there. And then you'll see how much room you have. Now you're not going to have as much room as I had. So I would, yes, make them real skinny. Perfect. Except you're going to have to write backwards going this way, but it's okay. I mean, you can do your little bottom first and your line up. That's fine. Yeah, no, you did a great job. Let's find you a thinner brush. So you're going to have to go over the letters twice. It's just the way it works. The first time you go down, it's going to be, it's not going to have the best coverage. They just usually look better. Okay. So you can do a finer brush. And go across like that. Yeah, that's a good brush. Yeah. That's a good one. Use that one. Um, sometimes after so many strokes with the brush, with the combination of the chalk you put on the board and um, just the paint, you might want to give it like a little swoosh. Dab off your brush a little bit, you know, if you swish it in the water and then um, 
fabulous. Okay, my letters didn't fit, so it was chalk, so I'm just going to wipe it off. It's a great option. That's why I like to use the chalk, because, you know, maybe you'll change your mind, you'll mess up, your letters don't fit. You just wipe off the chalk and start again. Let's kind of lay it out where we want to put it, and then, so we're going to put them down here. See, I think it would be cool if one of them just crossed over. Mm -hmm. And I liked when I put an image on a piece of wood, a painting, whatever, if it goes off the edge a little bit, it just gives a little more, like, where'd it go? Mm -hmm. Mystery. So if he's fallen off a little bit, I think that's okay. Have you ever stenciled before? No. Okay. We're going to start with a little stencil brush. Stencil brushes are flat on the end and they're very compacted. There's two different main ways to stencil. One is to pounce, where you bang, 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 bang the paint on. The other is to swirl it on. Mm. Pouncing makes it darker usually. Swirling often gives you more of like a muted, like the, it's on a solid color. I usually prefer swirling, but sometimes you need to pounce. Um, one of the most important things though when you're stenciling is to offload your brush. So we put, uh, I'm just looking for a um, scrap of something that I can, we'll just put it on the back of this board. So if I'm gonna do this starfish, I'm gonna dip my bristles in just the tip, okay? I'm gonna go to a paper towel an offload. I'm just going to swirl it around, see how the paint kind of sifted into there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the swirling is you just go right over. I'm not lifting my brush. My brush is staying down the whole time. I'm just doing swirls all around, covering the opening of my stencil. And there's my stencil. Very light. You probably can't see it over there. But always offload. Now I'm going to this is the pouncing. And sometimes like the ends of these, the starfish, cause they're so tiny, you want to pounce. So you can get into those little, and there's my starfish. It's not coming up too good on the, uh, the wood. <clears throat> so you want to position where you want him to go. I'm just saying, I think it would be cool if he went over the D, you can do whatever you want. Okay. Um, so you're just going to dip your tips in, offload your brush. So just do, and I would do some, yeah, cause you've got a lot of paint on, you can always put more paint on it. Do a little, yeah. Hold your stencil down. Don't be afraid of paint. <laughs> you're okay. And then you want to lift it directly up. <gasps> Yay! Beautiful! So, yeah, and I would, you know, I would do, things usually look better in groupings of three. So I would do like two more, kind of staggered. They can overlap a little bit. Make sure you offload it because you got... Um, and as far as holding the stencil down, so these are teeny tiny stencils we're doing on the signs and you should be able to just hold it with your hand. If you're stenciling a bigger area, you can always use a piece of painter's tape to hold it down. Great. I would do that same little guy again. Okay. And you probably don't need more paint. I'm going to guess okay. that there's enough on your brush and, and you can go right on top. It's not, it shouldn't smear it as long as you go straight down. Um, to hold it, you can use, if it's a bigger stencil, you could use a piece of painter's tape or they do sell stencil adhesive to, um, that you would spray on the back. I don't like using that. That's okay. We can always touch that up. I don't like the stencil adhesive because it always leaves like a sticky film on my stuff. Do you like it? Yes. Okay. 
I would let it dry a little bit as it is, and we're going to come back to this. We'll fix that, okay. and we're going to add some extra details to your starfish to make them original and one of a kind. Okay. So when I do little extra fun on my starfish, I usually do little dots on them, mm -hmm. like either gray or brown, like they would be in nature. So do you want to go with a tan dot on him or gray? Okay. Or you can do both. Okay. Just do both. Okay. okay, so the easiest way to paint a dot is use the back end of a paintbrush, and I'm looking for one that is kind of relatively skinny on the end. Okay, I'm gonna just do this color right now. So if I dap it in there, and I just go straight down, well, I, I showing off, I got a little off. Um, straight down, look how easy that dot is. I mean, they're perfect. So, on your starfish, we're going to take the brown. I always go right, like, down their arms. Okay. You might need a little, another dab. If you feel like you got, yeah, you're fine. Just, you can dab it on there lightly, yeah. Now, I like to add a little more fun to, with those dots. So I would take these, both these colors and just do a couple random dots around. Both these two? No, I oh. think, I'm thinking these bright colors. So do dots around? Here. Hmm. Like the sand that fell down, kind of. Just... Just a couple, not too many. Do a couple more green, maybe. And then a couple orange in there. I mean, that might be enough green right there. Mm -hmm. And then a couple, it just gives it a little more, a little more fun. Yep. And I think also those dots around it, it makes the starfish pop out even more. Um, what I usually use to seal them is a spray. Let me grab it. A clear spray lacquer. Um, this is just one of the brands. There's other brands out there. You just want to make sure that um, it can be used on wood. Um, they make some with a UV protectant if it's going to be outside. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are satin, some are gloss, whatever, whatever your preference is. But if you're going to hang them outside, the best thing is to put some kind of spray sealer on it so it doesn't, you know. And the other thing is, we live here in Florida, where the sun, the salt, all that stuff is very harsh on outside stuff. So I would recommend six months a year, give them another spray. Okay. Okay. They'll all right. Fade. And then Otherwise they'll fade, right? they will fade. Yes. That's why the UV one is nice. So that's it. That's our sign painting. Simple and fun. Um, just so you know, we do have some supplies here at Eclectic Whimsy. Um, if you're interested in doing your own sign painting, you can come in and buy the blanks, either the fish or the points. Um, and we do offer a large variety of classes here at Eclectic Whimsy from chalk painting furniture, sign painting, mixed media, um, quilling, all kinds of stuff. Um, you can follow us on Facebook at Eclectic Whimsy to see our classes that are coming up. Also to see some of the great new art that we have in the shop. Um, as far as the classes go, we do try to keep them small right now. And we try to spread out our students to keep social distancing. If I try to keep my mask on because I need to help you. I want to help you um, because it's all about fun and art makes life fun. So stop by, see us at Eclectic Whimsy. Just remember, Creativity is contagious, and we want to pass it on to you. Thanks.